Hi, I'm Dave Burkett, Michigan football beat writer for AnnArbor.com, here with my colleague Mike Rothstein. We're here to preview the uh, 2009 season and take a look at the uh, Saturday season opener against Western Michigan. Mike, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of outside uh, stuff going on with the football program right now. Uh, allegations of NCAA violations, uh, a probe into Rich Rodriguez and, and some of his past uh, uh, accomplices at, at Clemson and such. Uh, how much do you think that's going to affect uh, Michigan on the field Saturday? Well, I think it's going to. I, it, it can't not because you got to remember, you're dealing with kids 18 to 22 years old, so some cases probably 23. And the thing is, is that they pay attention. When they say they're not paying attention, they pay attention. They watch Sports Center. They read the internet. And guess what? There are kids back on campus, and people are talking about that too. Good, bad, or different. Plus, if you remember, current players were involved. And I'm sure that that's been brought up of who it is and who it isn't and all this other stuff. So I got to think it's going to make a difference. Now, of course, I mean, you got to remember this team was 3-9 and nine last year, so maybe they push that in the background and say, I want to win, but you got to think it's going to affect them something. Well, that's the biggest thing to me. You mentioned the, the current players. I wonder how much of a fracture or a divide there is in the locker room. i, I got to think that's not huge. You know, the freshmen, the sophomores, they came in under, under Rich. Uh, that's all they've known is, is this practice in your butt off and everything, whether it's within the rules or not. You know, they're practicing hard as can be. You know, and some of the seniors, I mean, even, even guys that, that – uh, may ha take a little offense to, to Rich Rodriguez's met methods. You know, they're getting ready for the NFL. This is their last shot, and, and like you said, they want to rebound from that 3-9 and nine season. And to me, the thing that I think is going to be most crucial to, to how Michigan does this year is the quarterback battle. Still a little bit up in the air right now as we film this, but you know, how, who, who do you think is going to merge and, and all three of them, I assume, play on, on Saturday? Well, I mean, it's kind of one of those things. Like, personally, I think playing three quarterbacks is a bad idea, but if you're going to try to unite the locker room, because there's absolutely going to be factions of people who want Sheridan to start, probably some of the older guys. And then there's going to be guys who want Denard to start. And there's going to be guys who want Tate to start. And the thing is, and, that, and maybe it's the most unifying thing, is that if you give all three of them a chance in the first game, maybe the second game, and someone emerges, well, then you can at least point to, well, this guy did the best. And it wasn't the coach's decision as the player, as the play on the decision, the play on the field. Now, if they don't do it, then Rich is in a problem if he really wants to decide on somebody. But he's saying he doesn't necessarily want to do that. But you got to think at some point he has to or at least cut it to two. Let's be honest. He's just waiting for a quarterback to emerge. And I think it's going to end up being one of the freshmen at the end of the day. Probably Tate Forcier that he's, you know, he's going to take the job and run with it at the start of the year at the very least. And Denard Robinson, Rich said he's more than just a wildcat option. And he probably is. You know, but his, his athletic ability, you need to get him on the field somehow. So I think by the end of the year, it's going to be Tate and Denard and some sort of quarterback mix. As for this Saturday, you know, I'm going with Michigan winning their opener. You know, I think it's going to be a fairly high-scoring game, closer than, uh, you know, than, than maybe some you know, Michigan fans can, can stomach. But uh, I've got Michigan winning 31-27. Yeah, I'm going to disagree. It's probably be the first of many disagreements that we have, at least on camera this year. I just don't see it. I, I think that there's going to be distractions. I think that... Michigan's secondary is still very, very suspect. You know, I've been very, very high on Troy Wolfolk. I've said that on air on, on the radio. I've written it in print. I really like Donovan Warren. I think he could end up being a shutdown corner, but Tim Hiller likes to throw the ball. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, that especially, and he may be the best quarterback in the country that nobody knows about because Dan LaFever and Central in the MAC. And I just think that they're going to get picked apart. And that, at Western Michigan, at the end of the day, is going to be a close game, but I think Western Michigan, Michigan is going to win because Hiller is an experienced quarterback. So I'm going to say 31-28 Western, and I'm going to say that that does not bode well for next week. I'm going to call it right now and say that Michigan could end up starting 0-2. Ouch, you heard it here from Mike Rostein. That's, uh, that's pretty wild. All right, so, uh, again, Dave Burkett, Mike Rostein from AnnArbor.com. Please check the website all weekend. We'll have up-to-date up to football coverage, lots of coverage from Saturday's game, and check back next week when we do another video. Dave Burkett from Mike Rostein, thanks for joining us.